Dark Souls is not hard. Do I have your attention? I mean, it's challenging. You do have to try, but there's kind of this misconception that you need spreadsheets, frame-perfect reactions, and like two bottles of lube. I don't know why I didn't just use a stock image for that, that was just kind of incriminating. But Dark Souls is not that hard, not even close. You just kind of need to think, and that's the end of it. It's just that there's a couple of biases that a lot of people bring over from other games, and it makes it a lot more painful and irritating to play than it really should be. I tried Dark Souls three times before I actually realized how amazing it was, so here's the three things I had to realize before I got Dark Souls. The first thing I noticed was actually pretty simple, and that was to pay attention to each swing. I actually brought this bias over from Zelda and most other sword-based action games, because in a lot of those games, the attack buildup is so short you can't observe it, and your invincibility frames are so long that you need only press the button in the same century. Add in an imprecise four-direction roll that you can't accurately maneuver around hitboxes and a near-invincible shield button, and players are only going to treat an enemy attack in one way a reaction game. No one pays attention to the way the enemy is about to swing because all that matters is pressing the right button at the right time, i.e. when the enemy actually does swing. But these games are built for this mentality. People say Dark Souls is too hard, but this supposedly impossible game has huge charge-ups. Why is that? It'd be because this game isn't actually that hard and people have just been concentrating on the wrong thing. See, I didn't notice this when I started Dark Souls. I figured that successfully dodging a move was simply a matter of pressing the dodge button at the right time. I simply treated every attack as the same. <sighs> if you do this in Dark Souls, you're going to be strangled by your own sphincter. You think to yourself, oh my god, I don't have the reaction to this, or oh come on, I dodged that. But your dodge isn't just invincibility frames, it's a repositioner too. People see an attack coming in and they just dodge. Left, right, down, more down. Whatever, they just pick one. But the enemies have such a long ass charge for a reason. They're not there so you know when to dodge. The build ups can be really deceiving if you look at them like that. Uh uh, uh, yeah, fuck it! No, these build-ups are here to see where the weapon is going to swing, not when. Hell, sometimes you don't even need to dodge, and moving far enough out of the blade's predicted path will mean it'll totally miss you. You see, when this Black Knight starts his lunge, I can just move around, but if he goes for an overhead diagonal swipe, I get fucked! Treating Dark Souls combat like any other game is probably the worst thing you can do for your experience. Apart from buying Dark Souls 2. I acknowledge that there's a big divide in the community on that, and there's probably a legitimate reason for it. It's actually a really interesting phenomenon, and I'm looking into it. To summarize, treat Dark Souls combat like an actual sword fight, because in an actual sword fight, when the sword hits you, you die, as opposed to being hit by the sword's invisible death cube. The hitboxes are very good. Trust them and play around them. And by play around them, I mean panic roll like crazy as you try to go for a mid-violence beverage. The second thing you should learn is that memorization is necessary. Before I said build-ups were to tell you where the attack is coming from, not when, so that begs the question, when should you dodge? And I'm afraid the answer to that is that there's no clever way and you just have to memorize the timing. Okay, in game design memorization is boring, there's no choice in bookkeeping, it's a straightforward mental procedure, no thinking required, just brute force. And you're gonna have to do it for each new enemy you come across. Now a lot of moves are distinguished from each other, so they're a bit easy to memorize, but some are just kind of obnoxious and the process of getting hit and then adding it to your database under that did over half my health dot sql is just kind of arduous. There's just no good way to tell when a move will strike or how many hits are in a combo. But once I got over the fact that memorization was part of the package, my god, this game just opened up to me. The careful balance of aggression and defense, stamina, health management, strategically dodging to put yourself in the perfect position to do as much damage as possible, heavy weapons, light weapons, dealing with multiples, prioritizing certain targets, Ah, oh, god, I just love it. But yeah, memorization. The game will try to make it easier for you since you can keep your distance till you learn the timing, and a lot of the time they have unique build-ups and combo ending animations. Like the Black Knights will do the hokey pokey and shake the blood off their sword when they finish a combo, but even then you start to memorize that tell. Maybe it's a little better if you have really fast reactions, but more often than not, you'll have to die one or two times. So yeah, just remember that when you start Dark Souls. From the second you wake up after falling asleep in the sauna, you're gonna have to start remembering stuff. The third and final thing you should learn is that if something is too difficult, or more to the point not fun in Dark Souls, there's probably another way. When confronted with Dark Souls is too hard, a lot of people give really obscure tips just because they assume the problem is something that you wouldn't already be able to know. Like start with a knight since it's easiest, or put all your points into strength and your ability to high five people. What I'm talking about though is a general attitude shift. I completed Dark Souls just fine without spreadsheet bullshit, only even used a walkthrough for one or two things. This bonfire right here? Fuck this bonfire. Most secretive fucking marshmallow toaster I've ever encountered. 
Game straight up deters you from looking over the edge. They thought they were clever or some shit. I don't fucking know. Whatever, my point is- uh, <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot I did that. I- <laughs> I couldn't think of a name and out of nowhere, I just remembered the Westboro Baptist Church and I... <laughs> I swear to god, there's no ulterior motive, I just thought it was funny. Whatever, my point is that if you want to beat Dark Souls, you don't really need to pay attention to stats or any in-depth jargony thing that you couldn't possibly get without exposition. No, no, you really just need to think laterally. The best example of this is probably the boss rushes. Now, if you're anything like me, one of the first frustrations you faced in Dark Souls was that it was incredibly annoying to have to fight your way through all these enemies just to face the boss for 0.2 of a second before having to do the fusion dance with the fucking floor and do it all over again. You know, the initial fight through all the enemies as you explore the area and try to get to the next marshmallow toasting spot is always fun because there's always something you can improve on and get better on with the first couple of enemies to ensure that you have enough health to deal with the last ones. So in that sense, there's always this feeling that your time isn't being wasted. But when you encounter a boss, the problem is rarely about having enough Estus Flask. The problem is finding the time to use it because the boss will generally kill you in two hits. And if you want to take a swig, you're going to have to dodge another attack to do so. Also, you generally end up having to fight it so many times that the whole area leading up to it becomes way too easy and becomes this arduous process where you're doing the same thing over and over and there's little to no choice. I don't want to beat the Anorexia Knights, just let me try the new challenge already! Thing is though, you don't actually have to fight the enemies. Like, like literally, unlike most games, there's not a please kill my employee's sacrifice gate built by the final boss. The enemies just stand around and aggro when you get too close. And while it's helpful to kill them as you take your time and explore the area, once you know the layout, you can run the whole map without fear of getting cornered. And you'd think running would be boring, but there's actually so many different choices you can make to improve the efficiency of your mad dash to the boss room. This thing is actually its own gameplay mechanic. In the Undead Bug, if you explore around in the opposite direction to where you'd want to go, you can find a door to a house that will let you skip a portion of the area. Furthermore, if you kill this receding helmet line knight here, he won't come back because he's a mini boss. And then you can take this leap off this bridge here and it'll be a massive shortcut that will skip most of the area. Hell, you don't even need to kill him. You can just work out a good strategy to get past him. I found locking on and circling to be one of the best ways to get around an enemy like this without killing them. Dark Souls rewards experimentation and exploration, and chances are if something is too hard or annoying, there's probably another way. Take a step back and carefully take in your surroundings, items, and any details you can observe about your enemies. Like this Dark Knight, for instance. Fuck this Dark Knight. He has his huge ass shield, hits for a million damage, and doesn't flinch if you hit him. At first, it seems like he has no weakness, but if you're more observant, you'll notice that in the tight alleyway he resides, there's no way to spin around and backstab him. So I grabbed a bunch of firebombs from the merchant, another reward you'll encounter by exploring, and then I chucked them at him as I started pedaling back to an open area that I'd already cleared out of enemies. Once lured there, I kept my shield up and started circling. Backstab, backstab, slice, dead. Boom. Easy. This kind of thing is all across Dark Souls. The only reason people think it's hard is because other games have conditioned them into thinking that you didn't press the buttons fast enough or in the right order. But so many different situations in Dark Souls can be solved by simply thinking laterally and taking in all the tools available. Even mechanics you would have never considered can be used and manipulated. If the camera is super shitty in some places, literally just lure them out to an area where you can use it properly. You don't have that option in a lot of other games. Chances are if something is too difficult in Dark Souls, then you've missed something. Boss too hard? Maybe you've missed a flying leap location that does massive damage. Been too long without a checkpoint? You've probably missed a bonfire, explore a bit harder. Too many enemies you can't lure out one by one? Oh look, they wear barely any armor. Grab a big ass broadsword and stagger them all with one... Eh. Trust in Dark Souls. Experiment, try new things, and it will reward you. Everything is designed with a purpose. I'm sure there's a symbolic meaning here. There is so much to love about this game, and it's a shame that it has such a barrier to entry and so many people can't get into it. I'll never forget being in Blight Town, low on life, out of Estus, and meticulously looking for traps and ambushes, each step more terrifying as I got further and further away from my last bonfire and what I hoped was a step closer to the next. I'll never forget the surprise of finding a shortcut that loops back around on the whole map and having this incredible sense of locational awareness without a single map to speak of. I'll never forget descending into Ash Lake for the first time and being in awe of how such a big area, so beautiful and unique, was willingly locked away. Not behind a wall climbed by those with money, but by a wall climbed by only true explorers. 
I'll never forget coming back from the long journey to the second bell tower, only to find the bonfire unlit and the fire keeper dead. What was before just a simple mechanic became a genuine part of the story and began a quest for revenge that I, as the player, was actually invested in. And I'll never forget fighting the gargoyle atop the bell tower, and every time I die I just take out my inventory and start considering new things I could try. Fire resistant armor, two handing my weapon since the boss was just gonna smash straight through my shield anyway. Finally finding a good strategy and bringing him down to half health, only to turn around and find another fucking gargoyle. It was so difficult, but my god this game has charm. And when I finally conquered that boss, the climb up that huge bell tower was so atmospheric and memorable. I felt like I was on top of the world, only to reach the top and notice a huge walled city towered above this tiny little bell tower. That in particular was the first time I realized that this game is magical, truly one of the greatest games I've ever played. I'd say good luck, but that's the beauty of Dark Souls. You don't need it.